Introduction to Communication Systems. As we've talked about before, um, the definition of communication is the act of transferring information. So if we have information that is written, spoken, uh, indicated by symbols or written word, if we move it from one place to the other, um, according to the definition, we have communicated. The first thing you think about when you think about communication is just um, talking to someone, kind of person-to-person -person communication. If, if I speak and you understand me and you're listening and paying attention and the information actually goes into your head, then we have uh, communicated. Um, people can communicate to machines. We communicate to computers by using the keyboard or speaking into the uh, and into a microphone and if the information goes into the computer and is stored on a hard drive or on a network then we have indeed um, transferred the information from us to the machine. Uh, machines can transfer information to each other that's kind of what a network is. Um, when you text somebody on your phone you are going from machine to machine and um, if you've ever um, spoken to your dog and told it to sit Obviously, it understands that, and if, if it indeed understands the command, then you have communicated to it. You've transferred the information. Um, animals, um, certain animals at certain times, can um, we know can communicate with each other as well. So we have all these different types of communication. Um, we're going to talk about um, some important historical developments in communication, and. Um, uh, the first being the alphabet and the development of paper and then the first printing, uh, the invention of type, movable type, and then the uh, some of the modern electronic communication devices such as the telegraph, uh, radio, television, and computer. The earliest form of graphic communication or written communication uh, that we know of were actually cave drawings. Uh, cave paintings left behind by cavemen and although they look like it these cave paintings weren't really art they were forms of communication they seem to be mostly pictures of stories involving animals and animals that they hunted no doubt to survive and so they were kind of the equivalent of our headline news stories and our sports stories that we like to watch on TV um, they were stories of the survival of the of the group and um, what no doubt happened is somewhere along the line um, a caveman decided you know instead of drawing a detailed drawing of the crazy antelope buffalo beast that we always like to hunt maybe I'll just draw a circle with with two lines through it and that'll represent the buffalo beast and instead of drawing the hunters in detail, I'll just draw um, a line with a little circle on top, and that will represent uh, us, the hunters. And the advantage of that is that I can draw this much quicker. We could draw more stories and tell better stories. Um, and also, we can draw things that we can't really see or touch. In other words, I could make a, a drawing that represents bravery or another one that represents love. So these things that they're drawing now that don't look like what they represent, we would call those symbols. Uh, we could have a heart shape that means love, so that's a symbol. And so what we've done here is we've gone from drawing to symbols. And uh, this is a very evolved form of uh, symbol writing, but it's kind of like half picture, half abstract lines. So um, pictures kind of evolved into symbols, and then symbols evolved into something even more abstract, and it's something that we use all the time now. And um, it, in fact, it's so abstract it's almost hard to explain. You know, what is an alphabet? Um, does the A look like an apple? Um, does the B look like a balloon? Um, these are just very abstract symbols that are combined with other letters that then form words and the words represent the thing or the idea 
And so um, it's kind of interesting how the alphabet evolved from from paintings, from drawings. So our modern alphabet evolved from drawings to symbols and finally to our modern alphabet of letters that we use today. So the next kind of development in communication was going from writing on your the wall of your cave where you lived to writing on, on tablets and stone and clay. But when paper-like substance was uh, invented, that was a, a big deal in that you could uh, write lots of information. You could roll it up into scrolls and save it. And um, in fact, the Egyptians in 4000 BC had huge libraries uh, filled full of uh, papyrus scrolls with information and in engineering and math and literature. Um, and this was all, all due to the fact we had paper-like substance. So from 4000 BC uh, up through um, about the 1400s, the main form of graphic communication was, was handwriting. And um, there were some um, forms of printing. It, it was not very common, but there were wood, there were wood blocks uh, that you could carve a picture out of and then ink it up and then print it onto paper. Um, but basically, books were um, uh, very, very rare. They were handwritten. Um, it took you know a month or more to to make a copy of one book, and um, as a result of that, not very many people knew how to read because there wasn't anything to read. And um, so handwriting uh, was a big bottleneck in the booming economic times of the 1400s. As you know, the stock market and economic conditions to this day kind of go in cycles. It goes up and it goes down. We have a slight recession, then we have boom times, and then we have a, a slight recession. On the 1400s, Things didn't move quite as quickly. Their cycle wasn't just like two or three years. Their their cycles were a lot, you know, quite a bit longer. But in the 1400s, um, there were boom times. Everything was going up. Um, people had money. People had jobs. It was all good. But there was really a big bottleneck in in uh, commerce, and that was um, the, the fact that there were not enough scribes to write all the contracts and all the, all the legal documents that that needed to happen. And um, a guy by the name of Johann Gutenberg came up with an invention that revolutionized civilization. And uh, the, the, he invented type, movable type. He in, it essentially invented printing. So he was a jeweler. He knew how to make molds and cast rings and jewelry of different kinds. So he came up with the idea of making a mold for each letter of the alphabet. And then he could pour uh, melted lead into the moles and make uh, lots of each letter, lots of A's, lots of B's, lots of C's. And then he made a wooden type case and he sorted the letters out so they were all in the, their you know various compartments. And then he could use these letters to set words and lines and type uh, and paragraphs and whole pages of type. He'd ink the type and uh, print it. And then when he was done printing uh, that page, he could. Uh, you know, hundreds of pages, then he could take the type, put it back into the type case, and then use that those exact same letters the next day to, to print another page. And so in a few days time he could print hundreds of copies of a book. And um, this uh, very much changed um, society because all of a sudden books were being printed, therefore people were learning how to read, therefore people were learning how to write, books were being written. Um, ideas about technology were being printed and people were learning very quickly about technology and so this is when science, the scientific principles, really started um, and just accelerated. And so this is kind of the start, the very grassroots of the Industrial Revolution. Um, so if you look at some of the very important things that happened shortly after printing, you realize that, that printing had a big part. Certainly, uh, Shakespeare's known as a, a famous writer, and had he been a writer before 1450, um, then uh, I don't know that anyone would know how great he was because he didn't get his—he would not have gotten his stuff printed. Um, the Protestant Reformation came about as a result of uh, Martin Luther writing down um, 
his complaints against the Catholic Church and uh, it got distributed all, all over Europe and people um, got upset and started the Protestant uh, religions. Um, Mozart, the famous composer, uh, uh, the Baroque period, you know, again music was being printed now and um, and could last, you know, if they had hundreds of copies of this music it could last a long time and people, uh, you know, to this day can enjoy uh, what those guys wrote. Obviously the Industrial Revolution started as a result of the scientific uh, principles and and so forth that printing started. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, Galileo, their ideas all got printed and saved and lasted all this time. So um, now we have newspapers, we have books, magazines. Um, so really the limiting the bottleneck, whatever you want to call it, in communication is just how fast could you get a newspaper um, from where it was printed to the next town or uh, uh, so forth. And so there wasn't any instant communication. It's still, paper still had to be transported by foot or on horseback um, until the invention of um, the telegraph. And um, this was the first time we could have instant communication and eventually the wires were set up we could communicate from one end of the country to the other instantly so people in California could get news of things that were happening on the East Coast uh, in the same day that it happened whereas in the past that had taken you know <clears throat> maybe days if not weeks for for news to travel then with the invention of the uh, wireless audio communication uh, came to be known as radio and then we have audio and visual communication through television and then the most recent development is how we now use computers as a communication tool. When computers were first sold to the general public, um, you know, people were trying to figure out things they could do and they could balance their checkbook and they do, could do different things. But the sales of computers really took off when um, people figured out how it could be used as, as a communication tool by using the internet.